Here to discuss the largest high-grade, undeveloped precious metal assets in British Columbia's Golden Triangle is Sean Kunkun of Dolly Varden Silver. Mr. Kunkun, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me on, Maurice. Well, great to have you on the program, sir, as Dolly Varden Silver has just released yet another set of impressive high-grade silver results from its 2023 drill program, this time coming from the home stake silver deposit. Before we get into company specifics, Mr. Kunkun, you have over 20 years of experience in capital markets, mineral exploration, and the development sector. From a macro perspective, what is your view on the natural resource space? And in particular, what is your outlook for silver and its impact on silver mining and silver exploration companies? Okay, great question, Maurice. Very, very good question. Um, I'm going to give you a bit of a long answer here because it's important to understand all the details. Now, silver is a small asset class relative to other asset classes. So what we really need to focus on, Maurice, is we need to focus on gold. And, um, you know, gold's got a bit under it today. There's some news out of China. Um, And when gold is breaking out, and that's what we're seeing, we're seeing a breakout in gold in all currencies. And, you know, gold is very close to all-time highs in dollars. Silver is on the verge of a big, big move here. And it's not only on the basis of you know um, the reasons that are driving gold, but it's also on the basis of silver has a, a whole other dimension to it that gold doesn't have, which is an industrial component. And the use case for silver, the applications for silver, um, and the shortage of silver is real. So in addition to being a precious metal, a monetary metal, you know, being used as money for the last 5,000 years, you've got an in, a growing industrial case. So I really think right now we're at a point where silver is going to be dramatically higher. And it's and we've already seen the start of the, the next bull market in silver. If you go back just a few years, you know, the silver price was significantly lower than it is today. It averaged in the teens. You know, we we now have a silver price that is is ready to break out. So I just think, look, I think it's an incredible opportunity for investors to come and start learning about where silver is being used. And, you know, one application, you know, you don't have to look beyond it is the solar industry. The applications for silver and solar are are growing immensely. We've gone from, you know, 3% of mined silver going to solar to 15% on its way to 50%. So solar is driving the industrial demand for silver. That is one application. But uh, you also look at how difficult it's become to get silver out of the ground that, you know, really there's only a minority of primary silver mines that um, are responsible for for where we're getting our silver. So I just think this is an incredible opportunity, one of the best ever for silver price, for silver equities. And um, like always though, silver lags and then outperforms. Uh, so we're, we're getting into a moment, we're getting into an incredible opportunity. It's time to load up on silver equities. What is that ratio right now of ounces coming out of the ground for gold versus silver? Is it still a one to nine? It's about that. It's, you know, one seven, one eight. Um, it's, so for every one ounce of gold we're producing, you know, we're producing less than 10 ounces of silver. And if you were to go to your local coin shop to purchase an ounce of silver, you could buy, you know, you know, for what would it cost you to get one ounce of gold, you can get over 80 ounces of silver. So there's a disconnect there. If you think about it, all the gold that was ever been mined is still with us. And that's not the case for silver. Silver gets consumed by industry. You know, about 70% of all silver that gets produced goes to industrial applications that are just growing. And then if you think about it, you go, well, only producing seven or eight times the ounces of silver that we are gold. Why is the price for gold 80 times greater than it is for silver? And that's where I think we're going to see a snap in silver prices to the upside. Um, and, and really, silver would have to go 
two or three times higher in price with gold staying constant. And I don't think gold staying constant. You know, you're probably going to see a 20 or 30 percent move in the gold price over the next 12 to 18 months. And that's, I think, that'll be the catalyst for silver moving. And, and the last time we saw this type of breakout in gold was in 2020. And we saw silver go from $12 on a low to $30 on a high. And I think we're going to see that type of percentage gain increase for silver. And, uh, you know, then you get into a whole other um, fact, which is silver's never been through $50. However, it's been up there twice. It got there in 2011 and it got there in 1980. And, you know, once we get up into that territory, we go through $50, you know, you're in uncharted territory. There's no resistance for price. And so, you know, where does it stop? And it, what's really interesting for silver is, you know, I'm looking at my desk right now where my cell phone, my, 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 my laptop, my, my, my monitor, there's a lot of silver on, on my desk here. Uh, but, you know, these products, the, the $1,000 laptop or the $1,000 cell phone, if the price of silver went from $20 to $50, it's not going to really impact the cost of that phone in a material way. So we could actually, in the industrial side, we could support a universe that had $75 silver, that had $100 silver. And on the exploration and development and mine side, that would finally be getting us into a territory where it would incentivize new mine supply. You know, with the price of silver at $20, where most silver producers' cost of production is $20, Maurice, where's the incentive to to produce? Where's the incentive to develop? Where's the incentive to explore? It's not there at $20 silver. So it sounds to me like there's a disconnect between silver and the silver equities. Is that correct, sir? Look, I think the big disconnect is between the paper price of silver or the digital price of silver and then what you're going out into the market and actually getting physical silver for. I think there's a huge disconnect between digital silver and physical silver. I think there's a disconnect between not only silver and silver equities, but also gold and gold equities. Like here we are at a time where the price of gold is at record highs, yet gold stocks have started the year in the month of January off over 10%. Why is that? And so I really believe it's as simple as a lot. It's, it's all about a flow of funds. It's all about a flow of funds. In order for a market to go higher, capital needs to come into that market. And we, it, we have a lack of capital rushing in. And I don't see that as a negative. I see that for us in the, in the sector who are investors, it's a tremendous opportunity. And I, I talk about this a lot where this is a business where somebody can and will pay you to take an asset and that same asset you can turn around in the future and sell for billions of dollars. So there's no greater wealth creating sector on the planet than in the commodity space. And we're coming into a time where precious metals are going to lead and dominate that sector. And they always have, they've always, gold has always been the leader and silver's the follower and then it outperforms. Well, one of those said companies that is selling at a deep discount that offers the shareholders the virtues that you've just outlined is Dolly Varden Silver, which hosts the flagship Kitsault Valley Project. Mr. Kun Kun, for someone new to the value proposition, please share the investment highlights for Dolly Varden Silver. So Dolly Varden is in the heart of an area that we refer to as the Golden Triangle. So the Golden Triangle is in Canada. It's in Northwest BC. It's just south of um, Alaska and Yukon. So it's in it's in a part of British Columbia, which has got a rich mining history. And we've got a project that at one time was the richest silver mine in the British Empire. At one time, it was Canada's third largest silver uh, mine. And what we've done is we've identified 140 million ounces of high grade, and that's a silver equivalent. So that's half silver, half gold. So you got 140 million ounces of silver EQ in a safe jurisdiction at great grades 
And Maurice, you know, as you've been following um, and supporting, we've stepped out and we've made some incredible world-class discoveries expanding and extending that 140 million ounce number. Well, speaking of expanding and extending, Mr. Kun Kun, take us on site to the Kitsot Valley Project, which just released 23 drill holes totaling 12,000. 150 meters of drilling, targeting priority zones on the home stake silver deposit, which have significantly expanded the width and extent of the reinterpreted high-grade silver and gold mineralization with some exceptional results. Tell us more. Well, listen, what makes Dolly Varden so special is when we talk about silver, most of the silver that we'd historically gotten in the past were from exceptionally high grade deposits, um, deposits that were extremely narrow. And the old timers had gone in by hand and, and pulled out this rich ore. That doesn't work in 2024. That doesn't work. What you need today is you need to have something that's big enough where you can bulk mine the ore body. Um, you look at uh, safety standards and you look at where we are today uh, as, as a world. And in order for an operation to make sense, it's got to be big, okay? And it's got to be profitable. And what makes Dolly Varden particularly special is we've got a, a large deposit We've got a high-grade deposit. We've got it in a safe mining jurisdiction. But the specific results that you are talking about that we just put out a week or so ago, they demonstrate there is a mineralized envelope that's about 100 meters wide. So you got a 100-meter mineralized envelope that's running 12 ounce per ton silver. That's running, call it 350 grams silver EQ over better than 90 meters. And that mineralized envelope that we've tracked, and you know, there's two holes that we put out. One was 93 meters of 357. The other was 79 meters of 315. Those are 100 meters apart vertically. So you're starting to demonstrate tonnage Great. Now, within that, Maurice, there's a 10-meter core that's running almost three kilos of silver equivalent. So there's an extreme high-grade core, not over half a meter, but over 10 meters, but within the mineralized envelope, that's 100 meters. So it is a miner's dream. It is a precious uh, metals miner's unicorn. And uh, what's exciting is is not the 140 million ounces that we have, not the 93 meters of 357 we just put out. What's exciting is the other 40 drill holes that we're still waiting to report. And to paint a bit of a picture for the audience here, you've got the home stake silver deposit, you've got the home stake main deposit, but in between is a gap. It's a 350 meter gap. And so within that thousand foot gap, we've got results pending. We did about 3,000 meters of drilling into that gap zone if we're successful and if we can connect the dots Maurice, think about how many more high-grade ounces we could be adding to this company. Well, I wouldn't say if. I'm going to say when. <laughs> and when you have a win proposition, you have a win proposition. You reference big and you reference bulk. Before we take a look forward, last month, Dolly Varden expanded its project portfolio with a consolidation of the big bulk copper gold porphyry property, which came of uh, somewhat of a surprise to shareholders. First and foremost, congratulations. In my opinion, this is yet another demonstration of your team's business and geological acumen. What has your team excited about big bull? Maurice, I've never, I listen to interview, I listen to probably five interviews a day. I watch a lot of presentations. I've never heard a segue like that segue. So I just got to say hats off. That was such a beautiful segue into big bulk. Um, Thank you. So what's <laughs> what's got us excited here is, look, there is, where did this mineralization come from? This high grade 140 million ounces, where did it come from? It came from big bulk. That's what our, our, our the minds that are at Dolly Varden, the scientists that are expanding and extending and putting this all together and creating wealth for our shareholders, um, told me four years ago when I, the first day on the job, they said, we need to get big bulk. And big bulk is a large copper gold porphyry system that is the source of all the mineralization in the district. And there has been um, an, um, 
there's been analogs made, um, analogies made of comparing Big Bulk to the largest undeveloped gold mine on the planet, which is KSM, which is just to the north. Um, my hope for Big Bulk is it's more like Red Chris, which Newmont is producing a little further to the north, which is an incredible copper gold mine that's in production. Regardless of what Big Bulk turns out to be, we got it for our shareholders by issuing 275,000 shares of Dolly Varden, so about a $200,000 um, share issuance, and agreeing over the next four years in another $1.4 million in cash and stock, um, and predominantly stock payments. So for give or take $1.5 million of cash and, and stock consideration, we just secured 100% interest of a fertile porphyry in the golden triangle that is the feeder of the mineralization of the Kitsilt Valley trend. So it, it and and it's right in the middle of Hecla Mining's land package. And Hecla is a 15% shareholder of Dolly Varden. So from a, you know, I have taken the lead as the lead consolidator in this sub basin of the Golden Triangle. And we did that by getting Homestake, which has been it's, it's transformed the company. It's been wildly accretive. And if you look at some of the drill results, the ones you cited, but also from pe previous results of 25 meters of 46 grams of gold. So we brought in the home stake. We've now got big bulk and we have taken where there were four companies that were competing in this area and we've reduced them to two. So we've got Hecla and you've got Dolly Varden, and those are the two entities. And those two entities are working together as Hecla is a 15% shareholder and is funding our exploration and development efforts. And so, you know, to, for the future consolidation of this project, it was an incredibly important deal. The other thing that we should highlight, though, beyond the mineralization, beyond the success, beyond the endowment, Dolly Varden also has a road to Tidewater. It's got a special use permit on that road. It's got surface rights at Tidewater. And, the, you know, those that infrastructure is so incredibly important. We've also done things like um, sign MOUs with the Nishka and with other mining companies in the area, looking at hub and spoke mining opportunities. So we're not just a drill story. We're not just a optionality story. This is a company that believes there is an economic project here, and uh, and that's why you know we've seen the company's market cap grow significantly. We've seen the share price uh, move up in multiples, and I believe we're just getting started. Well, I couldn't agree with you more. That's why I referenced the business and geological acumen. Some of the things that you just uh, highlighted here, the relationships with indigenous people, the infrastructure, it, it doesn't seem too exciting to someone, but those are paramount. You have to have that commercial success, that relationship, and the infrastructure, it speaks for itself, especially from a capital expenditure standpoint from anyone looking to uh, take over the project in the future here. Now, looking forward, what are some of the goals for Dolly Varden in 2024? It's a really good question. Um, I view our goals as multi-year and um, integral to the business. So I laid out a mission four years ago when I took over um, on February 16th of 2020, and I wanted to create a top 10 silver equity. And in order to get there, what I you know what I needed to do and what we have done is increase the mineral inventory of the company. So a lot of the things that we're going to continue to do in 2024 are things that we started doing four years ago. So we are on a path to show the world that this is an economic project by identifying enough high-grade silver and gold in the ground to justify the capital expenditures that are going to be needed to advance this project. So we're going to continue. Um, and there's there's many, many small goals within the larger goal. For example, connecting deposits. So I mentioned we've got these seven deposits on the project. We believed we believe there is a mineralizing event that brought in the mineralization to the area. If we can validate that exploration thesis, that homestake silver and homestake main, there it there is an event 
that has got those, there's a relationship there that those deposits are connected, that would be a, a huge validation. That would be an area where we could grow a significant amount of ounces and tonnage at grade. And so that's, you know, one of the goals is to validate the idea that these deposits are connected to continue to make new discoveries, to continue to expand and extend silver and gold veins on the property. Um, and uh, and also, I think it's a very, very important to continue to de-risk the asset through the permitting process. Ultimately, we want to show and make this a saleable opportunity. And there are some things that we've done on our journey to get us one step closer, which, you know, bringing in $75 million in a non-dilutive, accretive way to advance the project is an important step. Having shareholders like Hecla Mining increase their stake in the company, they're now a 15% shareholder. These, these items and these facts and these milestones are validating our journey. They're validating our move towards a you know, this being the next silver opportunity that gets developed in Canada. You referenced a lot here, but I know a lot of uh, our sus subscribers and shareholders like to know as well. When do you expect to have more news flow coming from the paintings rare results? I expect uh, results in early February. Leaving the project site, let's look at some numbers. Please provide the capital structure for Dolly Varden Silver. The capital structure. So we have 270 million shares issued outstanding. We have no warrants. Uh, we've got $10 million in the bank. Of the 270 million shares that are issued outstanding, 7% of that is in the hands of the public. 93% um, are broken down th with a 47.5% institutional holders. So these are institutions like Fidelity, like US Global, like Sprott, like Delbrook. So half the company is held by institutions. 22% is held by Fury through the divestment of Homestake. So we got a great aligned shareholder there. Uh, Heckle is a 15% shareholder. Eric Sprott is a 9% shareholder. So we've got just some of the best shareholders. Uh, and so that's our capital uh, structure and our issue now standing. And I'm proud to say I'm part of that 7% float, sir. <laughs> All right. Before we close, what keeps you up at night that we don't know about? Um, you know, listen, Maurice, when it comes to Dolly Varden, I just want to ensure we've got such a great asset. It's such a unique situation, opportunity, the timing, maximizing this opportunity and bringing, you know, and, I've, and I sleep pretty good, Maurice, because we work hard um, and we've, we've made good decisions. We've, we've always put ourselves in a position of strength by having money in the bank so that we can, you know, raise more at the appropriate times for a position of strength. We've been just absolutely um, overwhelmed with the drilling success. Like the results that we've put out are two or three times greater than I would ever hope for. Um, so when the project is working like that, it's um, you know it's 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 just a pleasure to to try to maximize the opportunity. But ultimately, you know, I I just want to see this project advance in a way where shareholders stakeholders, whether it's the Nishka, whether it's Hecla, whether it's you, um, you get the most out of the opportunity. And I, I'm very proud to say that, you know, I'm really happy with the way that we have managed this market and this asset. And um, I think we're going to continue to outperform our peers and uh, deliver value to for shareholders. I know you're very modest, but on your behalf, I do want to vouch for something you've just stated here. You reference shareholders. Every time you and I speak, that's almost the first thing that you say to me is you're trying your very best to maximize and increase the shareholder's value. You really have a vested interest in their um, participation in the company. Uh, you're really sold on that, and I, and I really commend you on that, sir. Well, listen, Maurice, I appreciate that. And you've got some young boys and, you know, I've got a, a couple of young kids and, you know, my 14 year old, you know, he's, you know, he, I had to explain to him that, you know, dad's not the boss, that I may be the chief decision maker at Dolly Varden, but ultimately I'm working for the shareholders. And, um, and that's 
that's the truth. That's how these companies are set up. And it's um, it's not just lip service, but ultimately we've got the shareholders at the top. We've got the board that's responsible to those shareholders. And then I'm out there working for the board. Um, and uh, when I make decisions, I'm thinking about all those bosses, right? And it's it's about you know the little old lady that's holding a thousand shares. And it's also about the mining company that's holding 20 million shares. And um, and and again, it's it's this incredible team. Uh, Rob Van Eglon, you know, who is our VPX, and and everybody that works with him, that is just continue to 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 surprise me with some of the results they're able to pull out of the ground here. And it's their ideas, you know. It's looking at all this old historic information, and it's about coming up with ideas around the structural controls of the high grade and where it could go and taking the risks and having the courage to be wrong and to take the shot. And, uh, you know, it's just, it's an incredible, it's, it's, these are, these are rare. Like we've got the Super Bowl coming up uh, in a week, Maurice. And, you know, I, I look at Dolly Varden and I, I feel like we're going to the big game, right? And we're going to win it for our shareholders. And it's incre- it's, a, it's a journey just to get there. And then when you get there, you've got to perform. And I've got the, I put the right team on the field. We've got the right owners. And, uh, and now it's just time to win the game. Ladies and gentlemen, you just heard and saw the Sean Kunkun that I speak to offline. <laughs> Thank you for conveying that, sir. Last question, and that is, what did I forget to ask? I think you got more than we've ever talked about. Than <laughs> All right, you sir. Got, you got it. Up. Mr. Kun Kun, it's been a pleasure speaking with you today. Wishing you and Dolly Varden Silver the absolute best in 2024. Thank you. The information presented on Proven and Probable is provided for educational and informational purposes only, without any express or implied warranty of any kind, including warranties of accuracy, completeness, or fitness for any particular purpose. The information is not intended to be and does not constitute financial, investment, or trading advice, or any other advice. You should not make any financial, investment, or trading decision based on any of the information presented without first undertaking independent due diligence and consultation with a professional broker or competent financial advisor. 